Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, we do have a very special broadcast that's going to be going up on iConnect, but right now we're maxed out on our file size. So we can't load it today. I have to wait till tomorrow to load it. But it is a it's an extremely important broadcast. A 30 second clip will appear here on Israeli News Live. So I'll try to load it uh, maybe a little after midnight. I think I can load it then so that you'll be able to see that. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, it is going into the intelligence community's involvement with ministries, why they do it, who's involved, at least the ones that I was able to find out about. And uh, uh, but it is disturbing, very disturbing. Uh, I, I want to get into this issue, though, here, because we've had three attacks here uh, in Israel last couple of days there. We've had this one here today, Palestinian teen wounds two day after seven killed in Jerusalem. Um, we have uh, actually it was eight people killed, according to this article here, and shooting outside a synagogue in Jerusalem. And then, of course, uh, we've also had Holy Land church leaders. Con oh, wait a minute, that's not the one I'm looking for. Their condemned settlers attack on Jerusalem's Christian. Oh yeah, Christian quarter. And this is a situation where uh, an Ar at an Armenian restaurant, there was uh, the Orthodox community was attacking the the people there. So it's been tit for tat. But the reason I'm bringing this up though is because um, on Daily Excellence on their Patreon channel. Um, which their videos are open to the public, uh, but you know if you, if you feel on your heart, you can also help support the work that they do. Uh, this is Pastor Anthony's uh, channel here. He goes into a Jerusalem terrorist attack or a false flag attack there. Let me just kind of pull this video up here for you real quick um, because uh, I got into this a little bit. Let me see. I'm going to show you guys some uh, footage from uh, what was happening today. Uh, in Jerusalem uh, with some of the attacks and things that, that took place. Uh, what we do know uh, is that uh, it, was, it is Shabbat over in Israel. The sun has gone down and uh, a gunman went into a synagogue and began shooting. Uh, as of now, there's eight dead, ten wounded is the latest report in this area. Uh, now, I remind you that we haven't seen a mass shooting in Jerusalem in many years. This gentleman was uh, 21 years old, their shooter was, and apparently is from East Jerusalem. Some have asked, is he Jewish? No, uh, he is not of the Jewish faith, okay? Uh, this gentleman appears to be uh, Muslim. Uh, typically, when we see these events take place, uh, usually uh, when an act, an act like this is portrayed, um, the person who does it normally is taken out usually uh, is taken out himself you know usually it's a suicide type thing that's not what happened this go around uh, there was a car chase that led to the uh, perpetrator being shot and so the interesting part about this and this is what this is a little bit different than we normally see in Jerusalem just because like I said we haven't seen a mass shooting in years in that area uh, and this was done on a holy night on the, on Shabbat in a synagogue, obviously really, uh, really trying to figure out a way to how, I guess how to say, to really stick it to the Jewish community is basically what this was meant to do. And uh, there's a part of me, and this is just me speculating, this is why it's on Patreon tonight. There's a part of me that just wonders if this wasn't some sort of a false flag. Uh, you know, the United States is asking for uh, both sides to keep calm, not to do anything great. All right. If you notice, Pastor Anthony said there's a side of him that wonders if this is not a false flag. And so I did a little digging, and uh, I actually got an answer back from uh, intelligence over in Israel. And oddly enough, not an official answer, but uh, it was stated to me that uh, a friend of mine over there, his wife was in communication with an, an older Jewish uh, woman who also uh, was questioning whether or not this could be a false flag event inside of Israel. And of course, why would they want a false flag? And, 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 and granted, false flags, oftentimes it's real victims, though. They're real people that die. And uh, the the information I got out of Israel, though, is the question is, was, was the PLO behind it or was it actually Israeli entities that were setting up this false flag in order to justify 
a harder line, a harder line against the Palestinians, for example, or uh, to justify uh, invading or going inside of the West Bank and, and raiding homes and things like that. The, we don't know the answer for sure. We don't have a definitive answer. Was this a false flag or not? I've not been able to get uh, a confirmation uh, on that either. Um, and uh, um, so, but I'll try to get more answers on this. And but sadly, those type things do happen. We had like over in France uh, when I lived back over in Europe, they had the shooting at the restaurant. A lot of people said, "Well, that's false flag crisis actors." But I actually went there and saw the bullet holes in the tree uh, that was right outside the cafe where where the uh, and I actually filmed that where that actually took place. So there's a lot of times there's real victims, even though it could be a false flag event or it could be a real terrorist attack, whatever the case may be. And we just don't know the answer of what happened here. But uh, but also, again, Palestinian teen wounds too, day after this, uh, the seven or, or eight, whatever the case may be, that were killed there. Another incident happens there uh, inside, uh, uh, you know, uh, Israel. And, you know, so it, it's just like, the violence is beginning to escalate. And so sometimes, though, these other incidents happen as a result of revenge or retaliation because of whatever may have happened in the course of the first event there. And then we have the situation where the Holy Land Church leaders condemn settlers' attack in Jerusalem's Christian Quarter. It says here, after an assault by an Israeli settlers on the Armenian restaurant in the Christian Quarter of Jerusalem on Thursday, Christian leaders in the Holy Land have condemned the violence or er, er, urged greater protection of minority groups and warned of radical aggression by forces determined to impose an exclusively Jewish character on the city. By the way, that has a lot to do with uh, Netanyahu's uh, uh, theocracy government he is setting up. Uh, and so there's a great concern even for us as well that that is really what it's going to come down to be. It's going to be a theocracy in Israel and not a true freedom. But this is part of the New World Order. You have to understand in the New World Order, they believe that, the, that Jesus never fulfilled the scripture where it says the law shall come out of Jerusalem. They're expecting this to be a Talmudic law. This is why Netanyahu has to have a theocracy or, or that type of a government, a religious government, so that they can officially say in the future the law is coming out of Israel. Which also leads me to believe that Trump will come into power, that something is going to happen, a false flag event, a nuclear device goes off in America blame it on Russia, and then, of course, they'll say that, you know, Trump will say Biden has lost his mind and all this kind of stuff, um, which only goes to stand to reason. In fact, uh, let's see, uh, like here, Russia agrees with Trump's perspective on sending tanks to Ukraine. The Kremlin is echoing a former President Donald Trump's concern about the United States sending more than two dozen tanks to Ukraine. Uh, and uh, so it says that Joe Biden this week announced that he will send an estimated 31 Abrams M1 tanks to help Ukraine in its fight against Russia which launched an invasion 11 months ago. It came uh, on the heels of the German officials saying they would provide uh, Leopard 2 tanks. Poland is also sending Leopard 2 combat vehicles, while the UK this month announced it will send Challenger 2 tanks. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. This also is in light of the fact of everybody saying that Ukraine is stomping down Russia, driving Russia out of the country. Hmm, well, if they're driving Russia out of the country, why do we have to get, keep sending so much more armament into the country, right? So all this is just a bunch of nonsense, a, a lot of propaganda they're trying to get you to believe. But the thing is, they'll end up bringing Trump back in. I've said this before. I believe that Netanyahu would come into power. He did come into power. I believe Trump's going to come back into power. The fallback guy, in case Trump can't get back into power, though, will be DeSantis. Either way, it'll bring about a new world order, a new one world government. Uh, so you're not going to want to miss that video that I'm going to be loading, hopefully right around a little after midnight tonight when I have the ability to load up another video on iConnectFX.com uh, because I go into the intelligence communities and the ministries that i am been made aware of, both from Israel and from the United States, that are controlled by CIA, NSA, and Mossad. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the support of the broadcast that we do here. We can't do it without you. And uh, we really greatly appreciate it. I'm also going to be doing this weekend a teaching on the Two Bride Doctrine. A lot of people believe in that. Uh, it is a total false doctrine, though. I mean, what would you have Jesus do taking his father's wife? Wow, that's a death sentence, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Uh, but we're going to get into that because some really good people believe that. And I understand why. 
Uh, I'll kind of tie that into where the report came out a little while back when John Hagee was saying that Israel has one covenant, Christians have another covenant, covenant, another false ideology. I mean, just the fact that Jesus says here, I say therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. The he is italicized, not actually in the actual text there. So we're going to get into all these things here. And, uh, uh, and, and you will find out in that video I did too, that special one there, I really poured my heart out at the end of that video there because I am very deeply troubled at the events that I see going on. This new world order, it is in full swing, full-fledged motion going forward, and I don't see anything that's going to stop it. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. God bless you, and have a blessed day.